know. Isn't there something about California that just makes you want to live that surfer girl life, everything so natural and effortless, and every time I'm here, I get so inspired by that. I am a beauty brand owner from Toronto, Canada, but one of my manufacturers is out here in California. So Amy and I, Amy is the girl that is at the helm of my company right now, literally just working her little buns off. She's not expecting me to turn the camera, but that's her in the background. <laughs> And uh, so we're here just meeting with our manufacturer and I'm getting ready to walk in and wow them and really make them feel like I could be the next big thing. We've been doing products with them for about five years now, maybe longer, maybe six years. Wow, it's time flies. So I'm going to do one of my favorite hairstyles which is that California beach wave. And this is my inspiration. My actual natural California beach wave. I, I slept with wet hair last night and I think this is so pretty. Everyone has, everyone that has waves in their hair always has like a section that they absolutely love. And then multiple other sections that do not look the same as this. So if you look at the rest of my hair, I have a lot of it. It's not all that perfect, beautiful wave. I have some pieces that are a little more straight. I have some, definitely have some, like this side of my hair is really straight. I have some pieces that are kind of frizzy because we were walking around outside. It's very windy today. So I'm going to try and make my hair look effortless, not like I did anything to it, but like I just woke up and I just had this like perfect mermaid hair. And that's not very easy to do. So I thought I'd do a video on it so you could see what I do. First things first, your hair has to be totally dry before you put a hot tool in it. That's very important because if your hair has any dampness in it and then you use a hot tool, dampness evaporates and then will burn your hair and that's where you get the most damage. So my hair is very dry. I have some heat protection in it. That's also very important. I concentrate the heat protection in the bottom of my hair and then there's a little bit less up at the top because I have a strategy on how I do, how I wrap my curls so that there's less damage at the top and I can, I obviously like, I love long hair and so I'm trying to get the minimal amount of damage. I recommend taking very small pieces. Um, unfortunately, this takes a lot longer. <laughs> And then I use a, a normal curling iron, not a wand, just because this gets nice and hot and my hair is really strong and thick. Um, so I put it really hot, which is bad to hold it for very long. So you're gonna see my technique. So I have it at 410. And then I hold it down and I don't open this for beach waves. I just leave it closed and I use it like a wand. Hold it down and then I wrap and I wrap slower at the top and I start right at the top. And so I'm kind of counting to, uh, let's call it, say 60 at the top. But by the time I get to the bottom where I also have some bleach, I just hold it there for like four seconds. And then I hold it in my hand for about three seconds. And I very slowly kind of bring it down, give it a little tug and that will just make it so that you get that nice S wave rather than a curl. So starting it right up at the top. I change directions as well. So those, all, everything in the front, I like to sweep back off my face. But then as I get a little bit further back, I'm going to bring this one forward instead of back. And that will give body and those beautiful mermaid waves I'm looking for. 
As I get closer to the back of my hair, I do make the sections a little bit thicker, mostly because I'm lazy and I don't wanna spend an hour curling my hair right now. I like, you know, I max out at about 20 minutes. I also really love this style because it lasts a really long time. And even as the days go on, because it's not a perfect look, uh, it will continue to actually look like better and better, like more lived in. So a little dry shampoo goes a long way. I also work from the bottom up. So I find the bottom of each kind of section and then work my way up to the top. And on the top is where I use the smaller smaller sections. All right, I just finished the one side. So now I'm going to flip my hair back over. And this is the side I part my hair on. So I just did all of the under parts and I did it faster than the rest of my hair, especially because this side of my hair is more straight. So I'm just going to need to hold it a little bit longer than four seconds. Last one on this side, and these front pieces are the most important. So if you notice a pattern, when I'm doing the back, I'm kind of like fast and dirty, and then I get to the front, and I want to make sure I'm holding the barrel down for this front piece, and I want to kind of tuck it so that I get a little bit of volume on the side, and I'm wrapping around a little bit slower than I was earlier. Not too slow and then making sure I don't want my ends to be curled, I want them to be straight. So I'm just kind of kissing for that four seconds and then I'm gonna hold. I'll hold this piece for a little bit longer and let it cool. But then because I'm holding it longer and letting it cool, when I let it go, I am going to tug it slightly so that I get a really nice finish. Make sure not to move your hair around too much because I do want everything to cool so I have a longer lasting effect. So now I'm left with my kind of like bangs to the back. My bangs plus, and I start this in the back as well. And for this, I take all smaller sections. If you have long hair, it will be important that you use, depending on what type of wave you want, this is the level of wave I like. So this is a one and a quarter inch barrel. But if you have shorter hair, especially if your hair doesn't curl as easy, then you want a, a smaller barrel. So I'm just going to leave this here for a second and very slowly wrap the ends so that my hair has more volume and it has more of a straight bottom so it looks more natural. And I'm not going to tug that one so that I have more volume in the back. And I started with that curl going back. So the next one I do is going to come forward. Okay, this is the most important part of the whole party. This is the part where I'm doing kind of what, what, my, what my bangs would be. So just that front part. The last layer I did all came forward and this whole layer is all going to be curled back. And start kind of haphazardly. So I'm kind of taking this from the middle. And these sections were really small and these are a little bit bigger because I don't want my hair to end up looking curly. That's not the look I'm going for. And uh, my hair, because there's a lot of blonde just in the front, if you have any kind of color in your hair, it actually makes your hair curl more, curl easier, the more virgin. So all the rest of this is my natural color. So the, the quality, <laughs> The strength is there, so it resists against the heat and the curling. So I'm using, I'm holding it for less time in this very front area. And I'm holding it a little bit tighter to pull it off my face. 
and I'm going a little bit slower, but especially on the ends, I'm making sure that I don't hit it for too long because the last thing I want is it to look too curly at the bottom here. I know right now it looks pretty curly, but it won't in but a moment. And then this is the last piece. I'll make sure I have all of my little baby hairs. And now notice how all the other ones I was curling like this, but this one, I don't, I want it to look like a nice bang. So I'm taking it more to the side, kind of on a diagonal. Nice and tight and deliberate. And then just about four seconds, one, two, three, four, on the end. Let's see how that turned out. So see how it's a little bit less curled than the rest of them? And then I'll give that a little tug. Now all of my hair is completed. I look a little curly Sue at the moment. I need my hair to completely cool off before I separate it. And the more issues you have with holding a curl, the longer you want to make sure that your hair is completely cooled off. I can still feel, if I touch my hair, that it still feels a little bit warm through here, which means that it hasn't set yet. So I will be back in five minutes. I'm back. Now for my absolute favorite part. And you can choose to do this two ways. If, again, if your hair does not hold a curl, then just use your fingers and run through like so. But my hair really holds a curl forever. <laughs> so I'm going to use a brush. But this is a detangling brush that has more of a wide tooth, like a wet brush. So this will always start a little bit curlier and then I'm going to do my makeup a little bit and it's going to fall even further and look a little bit more effortless. But the idea is to be polished and effortless today. So it, it turned out very nice. I'll show you once I've finished my makeup. All right, I did my makeup. This is how my hair has fallen and I'm ready to go. I have to leave because we're late, but I hope you're having a great day and I will talk to you very soon. Mwah!